probably my favourite comic event of the year. It's a proper national uh, comic event with all these big names come along to it, yeah. but it's also like a village fit. It's a lot of um, people who are really at the top of their game. Now I finally get to meet them. As you wander them down the street, there's very famous comic creators kind of hanging about. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful atmosphere, very friendly people. So, a cat out of ten to my yard. We started it off in the year, I think it was 2000, when Dumfries and Gallagher was hit by foot and mouth disease. All work here came to a stop, and of course the tourists stopped coming as well. So we started, uh, our, it was my wife's idea at one point, but she had the idea of doing a comic festival to invite a different kind of tourist back. So. Two years ago we won the Great Scotland Award amazing and um, we won £50,000 and to celebrate that, the anniversary of that a year later and my 60th birthday, um, decided to reinvent the comic festival. Uh, for 36 years I've been going to comic festivals with Alan and one thing I've noticed is there actually isn't much for people to do. So the proud boast of Money Eyes is every hour on the hour there is something. It's two days, that's just right. And there's a variety of events actually going on, a lot warmer with the looks, so uh, you're on the other stuff, there's something to do. This one's different because a lot of the people that come to it aren't comic fans. Um, in fact, they know very little about comics. And the other thing that distinguishes Money Ivy is the number of children. Like yesterday, we made a movie with like 25 different kids. And you know, did it all in a day, scripting, making the scenery, building the props, you know, it's really exciting. It seems to want to attract families and children and the trouble with the comic industry is that, you know, we need new customers, new talent coming up and that needs to be encouraged and, and Monty Ave tries to do its best in that respect, so I think that's really important. I like, I like comic conventions where there's no sort of um, supposedly showbiz barrier between creators and fans, because we're all just enthusiasts of comics. So it's just great to just all hang out and do stuff together. We do get really good guests. You know, we are the envy of a lot of bigger festivals, and I've got to say, they all come to Money Eye for nothing. They work their socks off, I make sure that they work, um, and, and they, they do it for nothing. Um, that's friendship for you, I did. Can't thank them enough. Um, John Wagner, Cam Kennedy, Frank Whiteley, um, all at the same time. It, it, it's unheard of. I, th I think it's, it is this kind of personal thing about it, because it's um, it's sort of the Alan Grant and all his pals from the comic business, rather than a lot of people who are here in the more of a business-like kind of way. So. When I first went to San Diego, everything was in a nice wee square. And I was crossing the wee square one day and there was Jack Kippy, Will Eisner, Stan Lee. And it was great. We moved it to the convention centre and it was just horrible. I want to be able to sit down with people and have a um, And that's why I, I like here, because Sue Grant gets me to do all these talks and I get to meet everybody that I wanted to meet in the first place. It's great. Very last question, what do you think Dread would make money out of? He would destroy it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he'd have nearly everybody under arrest. But... And see Tim O'Sullivan, the public can hear. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> yeah. And there's a couple of local guys I think, who would give Dread a run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tempt fate by saying that. <laughs>